Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. The weekend awaits, and so do watches, as ever. Everything you see here is for sale. Reach out to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, or sell. Remember, this is your direct line to me and my crew, and we are buying. We are interested in building inventory, paying the highest prices since our establishment in 2017. If you want to sell one watch or even a whole collection of the haute de gamme, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Watch names, references, and prices are in the description below. All right, today is high horology only. And we're jumping straight in with watches that frankly represent the best of the best. Fewer watches and more in depth, starting with an extraordinary model launched back in 2001 in platinum, approximately 38.5 millimeters. This is the Alanga Unzona Saxomat powered Langomatic Perpetual. As you can see, a dial galvanized black made of sterling silver inside a platinum case. The watch is only 10.4 millimeters thick and beautifully proportioned. This is classical Langa design. Sunken registers, white gold applique numerals and indices, and a railroad track outboard. Take note, this is a loomed dial, and not just the hours and minutes, complications as well. One of the long running virtues of the 922 Saxomat caliber is the zero reset set hacking system, which automatically zeroes out the seconds hand so that you can set the watch precisely against a reference time. Of course, you have the panorama datum, the outsized date, coaxial indicators for the 24-hour phase, your AM, PM for the day, the day of the week, you have your month, and then just below that, you have your leap year phase indicator and a moon phase, which is made of solid white gold and accurate to 122 years. Roll it all over and the Saxon map remains a absolute masterpiece. How many watches can you think think of that have a bimetallic doubly precious metal rotor. The rotor itself features satination and chiseling and it's 21 karat gold. The mass is 950 platinum and that's before we even get into the rest of the movement which features a three-quarter style plate in order to reference the pocket watch era of East German watchmaking and you can see that the timepiece includes a freehand engraved balance cock so no two of these are exactly alike. There's also black polish. You can see it on the case clamp screws, the heads of the pins. You can see it on the center of the rotor, as well as the swan's neck adjustment mechanism for the balance and the cover for the escape wheel cock. Fired blued screws as well. The watch movement is made of German silver, a nickel copper zinc alloy that has a lovely pale golden hue by virtue of the copper content. And you can see this watch regulated in five positions, the high horology and chronometer standard, ultra thin because of the three quarter style rotor. This watch puts it all together. It also includes an unusual for longa, full to Deploying clasp. Many longer watches, even complications, include only pin buckles. This is an extraordinary and deluxe opportunity. Throw it on the wrist. My wrist is 16 centimeters circumference, and it's darn close to the perfect watch. If it were swimmable, eh, it probably would be the perfect watch, but then again, you've got the new Odysseus for that. The watch is low, easily cuffable, handsomely proportioned, and wears well on a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference, so everyone gets to play. And because I teased the loom, let's do a loom shot. It's not often that I spring for a loom shot of a dress watch, but this is a rare exception. As you can see, the dial is fully loomed, and so are the sub-registers for the complication. Let's switch gears and talk about sports watches for a moment. This watch is probably going to win the Loom Shot stakes today. It's a model launched back in 2010. It is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph Complete Calendar Moon Phase. It is all of those things and still 300 meters water resistant, 45 millimeters in steel. You can see no expense was spared. This case is extensively hand finished to a black polish. If you take a look at the profile, you'll also see no expense spared in retaining the strap, which is a combination of rubber and sailcloth as hex screws are used to retain bars. No spring bars here, securely mounted to the case by means of screws and bars. That strap is staying put. There is a double deploying clasp, not the conventional Blancpain pin buckle. And you can see it is a double fold for easy closure over a small wrist. I always find a double fold is less prone to less prone to pinch a small wrist. The case band is excellent, distinctive, and shod with a combination of pushers and crown with a large and nostalgic big crown profile. Now, what's worth mentioning is that although these are shouldered crown guards, they are not screw-down pushers. 
So you can see that it has shoulder to prevent shearing, but you can activate the chronograph at any time without screwing out the pushers and you still get that 300 meter water resistance. Now you can see the watch features a flyback functionality that instantly resets and restarts the chronograph, an extravagant guilloche center dial with sunken sub-registers and plenty of loom, again, including for the sub-registers. Note the use of monotone dark blue discs for both the day and the month of the complete calendar. Let's listen to the bezel against the microphone. It's precise and it's chunky. It's definitely chunkier and more mechanical in feel than a Rolex, though no less refined in action. Because there is a cambered sapphire over the bezel, the entire bezel can be loomed with the sapphire acting as a scratch shield for the material. And unlike the conventional 5015, this model includes a full display case back with a lovely nautilus shell winder in white gold. You can see that the case back is open and gorgeous. The movement, of course, is based on the Frédéric Piguet 11 85, really, it's based on the F185 flyback model, and it is entirely hand finished, as with the Longa, adjusted in a high horology five positions with mirrored anglage on the edge of its bridges. There's engine turning on the bridges as opposed to just the base plate, so that's an unusual technique. You can also see that the engine turning in two different sizes is used on the watch. There's a black polished column wheel for actuating the functions of the chronograph, and the chronograph here is a vertical clutch mechanism, so you can gauge it without any jump or stagger and leave it running if you so prefer. I should also mention that the watch includes Blancpain's brilliant underlug corrector system, which was launched back in the mid-2000s that allows you to make adjustments to the indications of the calendar without pusher tools. Now you can see the moon phase down at six o'clock is rapidly advancing as I utilize the underlug pusher. This is a quick and easy way to adjust any of the indications, and I'll see if I can adjust one of the more dynamic dial features. Now you can see I am jumping the pointer date, and I'm doing this without a tool. These are designed to be used tool-free. They also lock out calendar changes during the danger zone in the middle of the night, so you can't accidentally damage the watch, and they clean up the case flank, removing the pusher dimples that are usually endemic to complications with calendar displays. Throw it on the wrist. It features a navy blue strap and sailcloth. It's surprisingly narrow from lug to lug, so you can see, although it is thick, it does fit on my wrist, and there's no lug overlap beyond my wrist. Let's do a loom shaft. This one's going to be thermonuclear. All right, that's, that's a UFO sighting. That's close encounters. That is mobile Chernobyl on your wrist. I don't think we're going to top that, but heck, we can try. That is what a true dyed-in-the-wool dive watch can do by night. Too chunky? Here's the antithesis. Brigade Classique. Now, this model that you see right here is extraordinary white gold, 40 millimeters, 6.6 millimeters thick, and with a Grand Faux enamel dial. This is a model that came out in 2017, the follow-up to the prior year's 2016 launch of the Guilloche dial. The timepiece, easy to wear, handsome, comfortable, flat, exquisite, handmade inside and out. Uh, this model includes a remarkably low wrist profile, so if you want the ultimate in thin, fine dress watches, this is going to be your timepiece. Now, the model, as you can see, bum, 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 includes a modified Piguet P71. The 7147 is the latest variant of the long-running micro-rotor ultra-thin dress watch in the Breguet catalog. The movement has been upgraded. You can see it features mirrored on of the highest grade, as it's easy to see even without a loop, and you'll note that the same degree of polishing is rendered in the jewel and screw countersinks. The rotor is a real rose lathe cut guilloche white mass, so white gold rose lathe cut, so you wind up with guilloche on the reverse side of this watch, and then Grand Faux enamel fired up to 20 times at 800 degrees centigrade on the dial side. The font that's used, as well as the general aesthetic, including the fired steel Breguet style hands, designed to evoke the Breguet wristwatch of the, or I should say the pocket watches, of the era of Abraham Louis Breguet and his sons. Now, although you can't see it, there is a Breguet secret signature etched into the dial between the cannon pinion and the numeral three. You have to turn it at the right angle and examine it, generally with a loop to see it, but it's there. You can also note that in contrast to its predecessor model, the 7147 includes a mono disc instead of two separate discs. The prior model included a primary enamel dial, which was cut down to a second disc, so it had a little bit of a step like a chronograph register. This recession in the dial you can barely see from most angles. 
45 hour power reserve adjusted in five positions. We've already mentioned that is elite, but you can also see updates have been made to the 1970s era Frederic Piguet P71 three quarter rotor in the form of an aerodynamic balance, an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and a free sprung architecture that is just tougher. You'll also note the freehand engraving of the bridges with the identifying information of the brand as well as the serial number, giving an aesthetic that is very craft art. A timepiece that with draws from the modern era to the lifetime of Abraham Louis Breguet in the 18th and 19th centuries. But I'm also a fan of creating new traditions, and Laurent Ferrier of Geneva does exactly that. Named after a longtime Patek Philippe complications specialist and credible race car driver, Laurent Ferrier, this is a family business, shepherded by Laurent Ferrier and his son Christian, they Great watches in the finest standards of Geneva watchmaking, but they have no sacred cows. And the fact that you can get this Galet Square micro rotor in stainless steel proves that they have an avant-garde notion of luxury dress watches. A steel 41 millimeter cushion case, the Galet Square came out half a decade ago, and it looks just as fresh today. It's relatively thin on the wrist, and it has that characteristic Galet or smoothed pebble aesthetic. It is bigger and broader though, and if it reminds you of a wire lug panorama Radiomir, you're not wrong. In fact, the integration of these lugs even creates a little bit of a Radiomir 1940 look. The watch is broad, substantial, and it definitely has more wrist presence than a typical dress watch. The dial at first glance appears simple, but there is tremendous nuance. You can see it features a vertical satin grain rather than a conventional sunburst, a sunken register with azurage or a fine concentric circular guilloche in a different metallic tone. There is a polished dimple style track outboard for the minutes, and you'll note both the hands as well as the indices are polished white gold. The hands asagai or spear shaped. The movement is a collaboration between Barbacini, Nivaz, and of course Ferrier. Barbacini and Nivaz partners in La Fabrique du Temps, a company that is a haut de gamme movement manufacturer in Geneva owned by Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, and they're quite open about working with the best suppliers. The design of the watch is extraordinary with a jeweled staff Paul based winding system that winds silently and energizes a 72 hour power reserve. It's adjusted in six positions. We've already established that five is elite, six is exceptional, giving DVA no position in which to hide. The balance beats way at 21.6 on an overcoil hairspring and it's free sprung for durability, but the real headline here, and you can see it just below the balance, twin nickel phosphorus escape wheels that directly impulse the balance. There is no Swiss lever in this watch. Inspired by Breguet's 1802 natural escapement, this double direct impulse system reduces friction, improves chronometric precision, and extends power reserve. It also operates unlubricated for long-term efficiency. Look at the finishing. It's as good as anything you'll find anywhere. Short of Grubel Forcey or Philippe Dufour, you will not find anything superior. A sharp interior angle over the center wheel, four interior angles where two bevels meet and a sharp crease is created, four of them inside the half bridge for the balance. Also note that that bridge has been black polished along with the bridge for the winding mass as well as all of the screw heads which feature chamfered slots as well as circumference. The engine turning on the base plate is micro perlage, tight overlapping stippling and gorgeous. Also note that a rose lathe has been used to guilloche cut the winding mass. This is as good as it gets and it comes with a rare for Laurent Ferrier full deployment clasp in matching stainless steel. That said, you don't need to go independent to have Geneva haute de gamme on your wrist in real steel. Two years ago, Vacheron Constantin launched the 56 collection, and I have to say, up front, there was a little bit of inappropriate skepticism. The entry-level self-winding model used a Valfleurier caliber, but the vast majority of the others use Vacheron Poisson de Genève calibers, and that's exactly what you get with this 56 complete calendar moon phase. The watch, to my caliber, measures just over 40 millimeters, and you can see that the corners of the case recall the vintage reference 6073. So that's oblique reference, but it's there in detail. The watch is actually quite substantial with teardrop profiles to the lugs, a lovely bevel that runs along the flank of the case that's molded in rather than finished, but still it gives a degree of visual articulation that breaks up the mass. When you get to the dial side, you have a couple of different textures, tones, colors, and materials, but a very pleasing mid-century inspired a triple calendar display with a pointer date aperture 
day and month, and then the moon phase. Railroad track in board for reading the seconds and the minutes. And then when you throw the watch on the wrist, it is a comfortable piece. To have a watch that is Geneva Hallmark, Vacheron made and stainless steel is rare, a privilege and a pleasure, as you're not paying a precious metal premium to own it. And yes, this watch is loomed, which makes it even more practical. Full deploying clasp, Vacheron rarely shorts these accessories. And then if you take a look at the case back, as promised, Poisson de Genève caliber 2 4601. Triple calendar, as you can see, handsomely executed with a skeletonized and hand-finished winding mass. You'll also note the Cote de Genève here are exceptional quality, deeply ridged, and of course laid down with abrasive wheels. The enclage on this watch isn't as broad as on the Laurent Ferrier, so you might need a loop to get the most of it, but you can see it glinting and gleaming. It holds up under close observation, and it is true rounded, mirrored enclage, not the machined and milled kind. There's engine turning on the base plate, and of course we have those black polished screws again with satination on the wheels. One feature that I'm happy Happy Vacheron included on this movement is a hacking seconds function, which for some reason appears to be vanishingly uncommon in high horology. You don't get it on most Patek movements. You don't get it on Laurent Ferrier. You don't get it on FP Journe watches. Why? I have no idea, but Vacheron is doing the right thing by placing it on this friendly everyday automatic winding complication. So let's do a loom shot. As mentioned, this is a practical watch for everyday use. The loom is worthy of a sports watch, and again, in stainless steel and automatic winding, you're probably going to wear this watch as often and as casually as you might a sports watch. As you can tell, I'm a very popular man. The phones are already ringing off the hook. This show is better business than I anticipated. All right, Patek Philippe. The Grand Dame. It's not the Le Doyen, that would be Vacheron, the oldest, but this timepiece is an all timer. 42 millimeters and contemporary, even to this day, it's hard to imagine that back in 1998 at Basel World, Patek launched a 42 millimeter dress watch and everyone nodded with stupid grins on their face because the 5070 was just that good. Made for only four years, the 5070R that you see here is an exceptional watch. According to Patek's own collector magazine, from Patek itself, 250 examples of the 5070 were made per metal per year during their production runs, meaning there's likely only about 1,000 of these in the world, and this is one of the best. Let's do the wrist shot first and then talk about the details. As you can see, it's enormous and saucer-like. I believe the inspiration for the 5070 was a 1950s pilot prototype that was extraordinarily large. I want to say it was the 2512 reference of which two were made, but if you look at that model and you can find pictures of it online, you can see where the 5070 came from. Now the watch does use a little bit of trompe d'ail to effectively cloak the size of the movement, and the concept of cloaking the size of the movement is essentially reconciling a Lemagna base caliber with a 42 millimeter case. And you can see that two concentric scales were used outboard to disguise the fact that the registers are relatively close together. But on this watch, it's so gorgeous you don't care. Also note that the dial is not conventional silver. This is more like Audi Avis Alubeam or silver with balls, as I want to call it. This isn't just a pale silver. This is dark, somewhere between silver and nickel anthracite. The case is as sharp as the day it rolled out of Geneva. As you can see, the fluting of the lugs, the first thing to go when these watches are worn down or refinished, the fluting of the lugs is still absolutely suit-like, creased and competent. You can also note that the step inboard from the case flank to the first degree of the conical bezel is also sharply defined and clear. This is what you want to look for with the 5070 because case condition is going to be the number one determining factor that essentially governs the quality of the watch and the long-term collectability of the watch. Now, when you turn it all over, they're all beautiful. Thanks to the CH2770, this began life as the Lemagna 2310, a movement conceived in the early 1940s, which eventually went to the moon as the Omega 321. Patek makes many upgrades. Let's count them. Poinçon de Genève or Geneva seal finish? Check. Replacing a flat hairspring with an overcoil Breguet style? Check. Replacing a mobile stud index with a free sprung Gyromax style balance? Check. Replacing the 48 hour power reserve with a 65 hour reserve? Check. Fully jeweled lateral clutch? 
check. And as you can see, everything on this movement, which beats away at a stately pocket watch, like 18,000 vibrations per hour, this is as good as it gets. You see the horns, the levers, and the clutch of the chronograph system, a capped column wheel, because after all, the cap of the column wheel is now a Geneva tradition, but historically, it was there to prevent the levers and horns of the system from popping up out of the crenellated towers under shock. So like most forms of aesthetic finish, it does have a root in function. And of course, this watch, is regulated in five positions, another Patek Philippe innovation over the standard Le Mania. Now you can see there is mirrored on glage, not just on the brass bridges, but also on the steel levers, the yoke, the horns, and the recentering hammers. All the steel components have set and finish on their top. All the brass components are either engine turned or feature Cote de Genève perfectly aligned across. We'll throw it on the wrist one more time and I'll mention that the watch does include a full rose gold Patek Philippe Calatrava cross style clasp. I have to say, I love the 5070, and while my ideal 5070 is the black dial in yellow gold from 1998, most folks are going to agree that the one to own is either the warm rose gold or the chilly cool blue dial platinum. Those tend to be the fan favorites, and among the rose gold models, this is one of the few survivors that looks as though it has never met the refinisher's wheel. All right, independent horology. There's one name these days that stands above all others in dress watches. Richard Mille still owns the sports watch game. And I'm not going to say F.P. Journe is gonna take over that territory too, but if F.P. Journe's line sport is a statement of intent, Richard Mille should be worrying right now. Nevertheless, Journe is still best known for haute de gamme dress watches, and the Chronomet Souverain, especially this boutique edition, represents the best of Journe watchmaking. Simple, flat at only 8.5 millimeters thick, 40 millimeters in diameter, and 48 millimeters lug to lug. This is a handsome watch that represents F.P. Journe's original philosophy of watchmaking. Before his challenge to Richard Mille with the line Sport, F.P. Journe was all about dress watches, more often than not inspired by the giants of 18th and 19th century scientific horology. The CS was back in 2005, designed to be F.P. Journe's most accurate wristwatch. And to that end, the timepiece features an extraordinary caliber 1304 in red gold that's adjusted in six positions. Remember, that's the truly elite, as we saw in the Laurent Ferrier, with two mainspring barrels to even out the torque release to the balance. So whereas a single barrel watch, like a Rolex, will run very fast when fully wound and then considerably slower with lower amplitude after just 24 hours, twin barrels helps to even out that loss of amplitude. Amplitude. So we have twin barrels, a free sprung architecture, six position adjustment, and this 22 joule movement is made entirely of red gold. The case is made of red gold. The watch is heftier than a standard 40 millimeter as a result. And as you can see, there's also a hidden train. You can see the escapement, you can see the balance, you can see the barrels, but you cannot see the means of transmission. The drivetrain of this watch runs under the dial. And because it is the Chronomet Souverain, it's inspired by vintage marine chronometers, which had to be wound exactly 24 four hours apart, always at 24 hours after the last winding. So it wasn't important to know how many hours of power reserve were left, so much as how many hours since the last full winding. So when fully wound, those power reserve indicators and this one indicate zero, not 56. The power reserve works the same way on this FP Journe Chronomet au Resonance Black Label. This is known as the Resonance 3. Post-2009, the design went to an asymmetrical dial with a 24-hour format and a 12-hour format to make the watch more useful as a business or travel watch. Now, again, the power reserve runs backwards. Zero is fully wound. What sets the Black Label apart from the Boutique Exclusive model we just saw is, well, the Boutique Exclusive is a black dial with a rose gold case. The Black Label, which is an FP Journe Boutique Exclusive only for previous purchasers of new Journe watches. That is the black and platinum combination that you get right here. Now, the watch is a resonance chronometer, something F.P. Journe pioneered in watches. Although Antide Genevier, a clockmaker, had originally pioneered this idea of resonance coupling with pendulum clocks, F.P. Journe began experimenting with it during his days as a pocket watch constructor and eventually achieved it 
back in 2000 with the first Resonance wristwatch. Two separate mainsprings, two separate drivetrains, two separate escapements, two separate balances. No mechanical coupling between them. They operate independently except for their coupling by the resonance phenomenon, whereby metronomes or pendulums placed in close proximity will slowly synchronize. That is what these balance wheels do. Now you can see there is a rack and pinion at center with a little gold pinion screw that's used to adjust the spacing between them to hand tune the resonance phenomenon. As with the boutique model, you can see the entire movement is made of red gold. The resonance phenomenon will couple the two balances so that if one speeds up, the other will slow it down and vice versa. So both being regulated in six positions and very accurate, they essentially self-police to maintain accuracy. But because resonance takes about seven to 10 minutes to fully take purchase on the watch, there is a system that allows you to fly back and synchronize the seconds hands of the two independently settable dials. So what appears to be a crown is actually a flyback mechanism and the crown for winding and setting is a bullhead up at 12 o'clock. Gerard Perigo is not a brand we discuss too often and that's a shame because the folks out of La Chaux de Fonds build beautiful things, and by virtue of its ownership of Bout, which was a 1791 founded watchmaker and casemaker, Gerard Perigo enjoys an enormous back catalog of great watches and elite history. But back at the turn of the 21st century, Gerard Perigo launched the WWTC, a modern tradition that has become omnipresent in the catalog and probably the most recognizable icon of Gerard Perigo today, with the Laureato in and out of the catalog over the years and the Three Golden Bridge generally relegated to true haute de gamme pieces that are rarely seen, the WWTC, or Worldwide Time Control, is probably the most recognizable and most sought Gerard Perigo. Now, 43 millimeters in red gold, this is the WWTC chronograph financial time, and it allows you to see the financial capitals of the world as they relate to each other. The world time including arcs of red and blue that permit you to see the hours during which the primary exchanges overlap and do business in sync with each other, so you can execute and coordinate with foreign exchanges from your home exchange, which you place at 12 o'clock. I'm in Philadelphia, so New York is my home time zone, and as you could see, because the reference ring, the 24-hour reference ring moves counterclockwise, we're getting within a few hours of the closing bell at New York. Now you can also see the overlapping with, for example, London, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and it's basically a world time system for traders. The watch is also a chronograph, fully loomed and powered by a Gerard Perigo 3000 series base caliber, which means it is a high horology, ultra thin automatic, very handsome, it pivots on 63 joules, 46 hour power reserve, quick set and hacking seconds, and the watch features crowns on both sides, both screw downs, one of which is used to adjust the world time, the other of which is used to set and adjust the watch and the date. There is a nickel anthracite or ardoise, metallic gray, sunburst dial at center, and the watch includes a full red gold clasp. Let's pop out for a minute, not hold quite so close, and you can see it is a full-sized dress watch. This is a timepiece for a big wrist. If you're a football player, if you're a large man, if you're a professional bouncer with a little bit of a raffish streak, this is the watch for you. A timepiece from a true high horology manufacturer that has a handy dandy chronograph and of course the world time functionality, plus it's abundantly loomed and we're going to do a loom shot right now. That is the WWTC Chronograph Financial Time by Night. The big, the bold, the untold, and the first ever appearance of Jacob & Co. on this show or this channel. These watches are all exotic, and Jacob & Co. is fairly open about working with movement suppliers, but not so much about working with outside designers in the creation of its high horology watches. And that's exactly what we have here. This is the Epic X Racer, a model 44 millimeters in grade five titanium with composite inserts for contrast. This is a timepiece that was originally launched in 2011 as a design concept by jewelry and watch designer Benjamin Muller. And as you can see, Jacob & Co. gave him a writer's credit. This watch is 
now part of the Jacob & Co. lineup on a full-time basis, and it is extraordinary in that it was designed inside and out. Muller designed both the architecture of the concepto-sourced movement as well as the case, which is why you can see the splayed, almost cross-form design of the lugs continues unabated and actually rolls right through the case along two vertical axes so that the case and the movement are integrated into one styling, one form, one cohesive statement. It also has remarkable depth. We'll get close again. You can see this manual wind movement transmits power from an open barrel at 12 o'clock all the way to a balance fully exposed down at six. All of the action in this movement is on the dial side, right down to the motion works that regulates the movement of the hands. You can see this is the Epic X, the Epic X Racing, and the movement by Concepto is gorgeous. You can see Concepto's famed uh, mono spring. Essentially, it's a combination of springs for the keyless works, as well as the click and the ratchet wheel, and it's almost organic as it flies out like wild flora, and the timepiece, all nickel anthracite, has a cool techno-industrial look. It's, it's very mechanical. We talked about the idea of a machine taken from the inside out with a lot of open dials, and this really takes that idea to the next level. The beveling is impressive, the screws are of high finishing quality, the satin nation on the steel parts is world-class and you can see there is a dark coating with engine turning as well as beveling and satination across the bridges so the style the finish and the feel are first rate though it is a large watch and make no mistake 44 millimeters is large it's 53 millimeters from lug to lug but it's only 13 millimeters thick and with a wonderfully supple almost buttery strap that abundantly vents the wrist on both sides this is a very summery watch maybe not the most aggressive of sports watches but a ton of fun if you love movements for the sake of movements benjamin muller and jacob and co have got your number now if you want one watch that can do it all, you want the Patek Philippe Nautilus Travel Time Chronograph. The 5991A launched back in 2014, it's 40.5 millimeters in steel, which means not only is it durable, but its size is wearable on almost any wrist. It's 120 meters water resistant, which means not only is it durable, but it is also impossible to drown as long as you take that crown and screw it down. The watch is also thin at only 12.8 millimeters thick. It's only half a millimeter thicker than a 5980 Nautilus chronograph, but it gives you travel time functionality and a flyback chronograph and a loomed dial. You can see how easily it fits on my wrist. It looks good on a big wrist. It fits well on a small wrist. I have plenty of clearance on both sides. Now taking a look at the dial, this is iconic Nautilus. Patek Philippe keeping the horizontal strakes as well as the gradient that's been present in Nautilus dials since 2006. It fades from a sort of silver gray that's centered almost black at its edge. Note one of my favorite refinements, and that's the chronograph minutes register goes up to 60 rather than stopping at 30. You have AM, PM indicators, for both local and home times, a radial date up at 12 o'clock, and if you want to clean up this dial, you can always hide the travel time hand. Note that Patek Philippe cleaned up the case without spoiling the lines of the Gerald Genta original from 1976, indicating that the travel time pushers should be completely one and the same as the nine o'clock winglet of the Nautilus. You can also see that the pushers have been elegantly integrated into the three o'clock winglet so that it minimally alters the original. Note that this is not just a chronograph, this is a flyback chronograph. You have the ability to reset and restart the chronograph with one push of the reset trigger. Flip it all over and you have Patek Philippe's first ever automatic in-house chronograph caliber, the CH28520. Free sprung, six position adjustment, anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, 55-hour power reserve with both vertical clutch and column wheel. This watch has it all. You could own an entire case of complications, dress watches, and sports watches, or you could own just one 5990. As you've only got two wrists, and more often than not, just one of them wearing a watch, I can't think of a better only watch for the true hardcore connoisseur. Let's do a loom shot. As with everything else, the 5990 does loom shots well. I bet you didn't see this coming, but back in 2016 at Basel World, the Monsieur de Chanel was one of the most discussed new watches. Uh, this timepiece, which I should probably correct myself, debuted at SIHH, but this watch 
40 millimeters and only approximately 10.5 millimeters thick is one of the best new watches of the modern era. Powered by a Romain Gautier Finest Caliber 1 with a three-day power reserve, a retrograde, and a jump hour, the Monjou de Chanel is exactly what its name implies, a real high horology mechanical watch for male collectors. The case band is gorgeous, and as you can see, Attention to detail runs strong in the Chanel tradition. A combination of polish and satination with a mid-case formed by longitudinal satin and the overlapping polished lips of the case back and bezel. Turn it all around, you can see one of the motifs of the Chanel brand, the lion on the crown. You'll note the lion also on the case back. This is where I have to just express my love for the model in all of its forms. This rose gold model was the charter member of the Monjou de Chanel family back in 2016, and it is extraordinarily sharp. As you can see, the retrograde spans a larger portion of the dial than on a conventional retrograde minute scale. You'll also note that the faceting of the rose gold frame for the hour recalls the Chanel number no. 5 perfume bottle, so the iconography of Chanel is omnipresent in this watch. Where things get really interesting is with the manual wind 3-day power reserve caliber 1. Note that it's free-sprung and braced on a full balance bridge, giving this almost sports watch-like shock resistance. What you'll notice, however, is that the wheels look awfully familiar. And if you're familiar with Romain Gautier, one of the premier independents of the Valley de Jeu, then you're going to know exactly where this movement came from. At face value, Chanel owns a chunk, a sizable chunk of Romain Gautier, just as it now owns a sizable chunk of F.P. Journe. And while Chanel will admit to Romain Gautier designing and supplying the wheels for this movement, I've spoken to Gautier's personnel, and when I mentioned that they provided the wheels for the Monsieur de Chanel, their response was, <laughs> just the wheels? So if you want to know where this watch comes from, that should give you a clue. Also note how the ends of the case have been flatted out so that the strap can be close coupled to the case and pull straight down without any impingement. There's a garage on the flank of the lug profiles that allows the strap to be almost integrated in its appearance and it wears so easily on a small wrist as well as low and cuffable. But I have to say, this is a watch almost everyone can love, almost every wrist can love. Now, how do you know that those wheels and this movement architecture look like those of Romain Gautier? Well, I have a Romain Gautier Logical One, one of five from the Freedom Collection in black and titanium. This is a watch that was the 2016 update of the original 2013 Logical One. 43 millimeters in black titanium. You can see the case band is satin finished, polished, sculpted, evacuated, flared and fluted. It is incredibly handsome. From the setting crown at 2 o'clock to the winding button at 9 o'clock, this is a watch that defies all conventions. Absolutely gorgeous with an open dial. You could see a free-sprung balance. You could see a double Grand Faux blue enamel dial. The minutes, the hours, and the seconds all on Grand Faux blue. You can see the famed Snail Cam Fusée, a constant force device that puts both barrel and fusée and, I should say, the third member of the trio, the chain, in the same plane. And, you'll note, you can adjust the winding, wind the mechanism, and do so with the novel button system at 9 o'clock. This makes it difficult to accidentally overwind the watch as each push is more measured. The timepiece also uses that constant force device to maintain constant balance amplitude. So not only is this watch exceptionally beautiful, but it's exceptionally accurate. On the reverse side, you can see you lose track of the interior angles where two bevels meet and create that sharp crease line. This watch includes over two dozen hand-finished interior angles. All the screw heads are black polished, and if you note, they have an S slot that is proprietary for applying more secure torque. The barrel acts as an informal power reserve because you can see the coil of the spring, but there's also a formal power reserve indicator. The bevels are a mile wide, mirrored and optically perfect, and you can see the circle within a circle design of Romain Gautier wheels. Turn it all back to the dial side, and you can see that this is a watch of extraordinarily rare beauty and innovation. Romain Gautier is an engineer and a businessman. He is 
a representative of the finest traditions of the Valet de Jeu because he sets the standard. He accepts nothing less than perfection. And as an engineer, he innovates his own fusée system, his own free-sprung balance, making all of the parts of the watch, the mechanical parts for his own use. And then because he is a denizen of the Valet de Jeu, he insists on top flight finishing. Just look at the bridge for the fusée system. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight interior angles. The entire bridge between the two pivot points is continuously rounded and specular or black polished. Along with the Grand Faux enamel and the titanium case, five pieces made. This is as good as it gets. Guys, remember, Team Osso at thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, or sell. We're buying whole collections or individual watches. Reach out to me directly. Timeout, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.